All right, we're here. What's up, folks? <laughs> um, this is Steve Holmes, streaming live from Los Angeles uh, from the drum room today. And today we're doing a little something different. Normally we do a lot of playing, but um, today we're going we're gonna to do some gear stuff. We're going to change the heads on my old Yamaha recording custom drums, which I haven't used for quite some time. Um, lately I've been using the Yamaha Phoenix actually ever since the Phoenix came out um, but before that for years and years I played this set of recording customs um, so they've been on the shelf for a while and I thought it would be fun to take them back out and uh, mic them up and tune them up and all that stuff um, and uh, many of you have expressed interest in wanting to see just like putting on heads and tuning the drums um, and so normally I wouldn't do this kind of thing but but y'all have asked and so we're gonna try it all right this could be potentially embarrassing <laughs> uh, we'll see um, these drums are not mic'd I've got a couple of overheads I've got this talkie mic and so it's not going to be like the direct um, pro uh, sound that that normally we have here um, but it's kind of off the cuff and just like a fun a fun thing to try um, I left the Phoenix bass drum here and uh, the um, all the Tom Toms are recording custom. It's an 8, 10, 12, 15, 15 floor tom, not 16. Um, and these old heads are still on here. They sound like crap. I'll, I'll hit them for you. We've got the new heads here. Um, but these are old Emperors, Remo Emperors, uh, which are double ply. Um, uh, let's see, do we got? We got Borba Symbols. What's up, Steve? Happy belated birthday. Thanks. Recording customs, yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, these drums have a lot of history, uh, but they're not tuned, and these are old heads, and so here's what, here's what we're starting with. <laughs> so I've been playing like a four-piece for, for a long time, right? Um, I was doing a five piece for for years and and I haven't had three rack toms since probably man like mid 90s you know uh, I brought these drums with me uh, from LA actually it's a funny story I had I had uh, 10 12 13 15 right those were my three rack toms um, and I went to music school at in Hollywood at Musicians Institute and my roommate <laughs> at the time uh, was this guy named Kurt and he wanted my 13 uh, and I wanted his 8 and so we traded <laughs> actually um, and so he still I think he still regrets that decision <laughs> I was actually gonna send him a picture of this today but I didn't um, but here we are 8 10 12 15 right uh, the bass drum is still a 22 inch Phoenix uh, okay so we're gonna take these heads off these are emperors and we're gonna put on these um, Yamaha uh, clear ambassadors, which we got a new set right here. So we'll see how it goes. Um, it'll be interesting because you know they're not directly mic'd, and so it's possible that I'll be like, "Hey, these sound good." Once I'm all tuned up, but they actually might not sound good through these like these crappy mics. So I thought we would start with the ten because the ten is is the easiest um, actually. So we're gonna do that. I know there's a lot of uh, cool like drum tuning gadgets and stuff on the market. I'm actually kind of intrigued by um, how tech advances have affected uh, drumming in general in terms of gear. Uh, I know there's a lot of cool metronome apps and stuff. Uh, and I have a couple, but I haven't like really dove too deep into one. I know that Gavin Harrison just put out one. Steven Turner says, hey, Steve, always loved the toms, but never rated the bass drums. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with the Yamaha stuff, especially with the toms. All right, so here's the 10. Here's the Emperor. See you later. All right, let's empty the crap out of this guy. Um, let's do this. Beautiful shell, man. These recording customs. 
Look at that. Yeah. And I, I'm not one for like, I know a lot of guys are into like getting the bearing edges done and, and all that stuff. And I mean, I, I've never really been into that, but I mean, I'm never, you know, I'm not like touring stadiums, you know, like doing 300 shows a, a, a year. And if I was, I might be a little more inclined to check that stuff out. Um, before we put the top head on, I thought it might be a good idea to hit the bottom. This is, this is kind of my process when I'm tuning, just to kind of see what, what tone the bottom head has. Ooh. That's pretty bad. So what I'm going to do, this is the bottom head. I'm going to crank it. This is kind of like the Simon Phillips, the Simon Phillips technique. Cause he, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen, he, he has an old instructional video where he shows how to tune his bass drum. Uh, and if you can say anything about Simon Phillips, it's that he always has an impeccable drum sound. Uh, and he cranks his bass drum head and then he actually puts the drum flat and like jumps up and down on it. It's pretty crazy. Uh, point being is that he wants to stretch out the head, kind of break it in. Uh, and so this is what we're doing. All right, so I've cranked, I've cranked the bottom head and uh, now we're gonna get it uh, loose again. Um, I do this for the top and bottom. I kind of crank the head, I stretch it out, and then what I do is, is I loosen it up to about uh, hand tightening, you know, uh, tension. And, uh, and then I kind of go from there, obviously keeping an eye on wrinkles and such. Um, and I'm not, I mean, just to say it, like I don't, I don't profess to be like a drum tuning, you know, like master or just like, I mean, I, there is a particular sound that I'm going for and I like the sound of my drums, like in my videos and stuff. So that's the only thing that I'll claim <laughs> is that I like how my drums sound. So if you like how my drums sound, then this may be of interest to you. Um, and it's not just like the sound of a drum that I'm going for. It's kind of like a range, you know, like I have a very particular you know, um, sound like I, I like my the floor toms to sound like really low and thunderous and the high tom to kind of not be too high, you know, get most of the tone out of the bottom head. Uh, um, but man, the 10, the 10 really needs to sing. So let's see if we can get it to sing. I'm going to tune it up a little bit. Again, this is the bottom head. Yeah, that tone, doo, like for the middle tom, like the, that's the go-to rack tom. That's the tom we're gonna hit, of all, like, because I've been playing a four-piece forever, right? And so, like, this is the this is the, the the main tom that I'll be hitting. So there's definitely like a, a tone that I want in my head, doo, not too high, not too low, doo. Yeah. So again, that's the bottom head that's gonna be driving a lot of the tone. Um, so let's put on the top head. Uh, I don't know how folks are uh, in terms of being particular about uh, where the the logo for the head goes, like what you know, which way it's oriented, you know, uh, on the drum. Um, I try to, I kind of try to have it around top, but it's like it's it's not terribly important. Um, all right, so again, we had emperors, and we're doing ambassadors now. Clear ambassador. All right, so the head seated, putting in the loves, tightening by hand. I guess we don't really need to approach this from an instructional standpoint <laughs> because most of you know how to tune drums. Uh, it really is subjective. I mean, someone's sound is like, it's such a, your sound is like, it, you have a sound whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. Um, when you play your drums, you have like, a thing, you know, an overall thing and an individual thing for each drum. Um, and so it's good to, to, to get particular and specific about like what your sound is. Uh, we're doing the same thing with the top head that we did with the bottom. We're going to crank the F out of it. Um, and that's, um, then we're going to loosen it again and, and then tune. Okay. Um, but it always, you know, all my favorite drummers growing up, you know, like for my generation, the guys that, that I was into, you know, th their drum sound is a, was always a thing, you know, like even the rock guys, you know, Alex Van Halen, Neil Peart, those guys, like they had a sound that they were going for and it, it was, it was, 
it was like a recognizable thing. I mean, above and beyond that, like Phil Collins, you know, with his kind of, you know, his open concert toms, you know, the tom toms without the bottom head. Um, yeah, we do this thing. Hey, uh, there might be some guys out there that are like in the gear that are like, Steve, what are you doing? You're doing it wrong. It's very possible that I'm doing it wrong. All right, this thing's cranked. Uh, I don't see any problems visually. No cracks, no wrinkles, no blah. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna take it back down again to about hand tightening tension, and that's kind of the starting point for me. Bobby Vincent says, hey Holmes, what's up? Um, oh, Matthias is here, you guys. Hey Steve, how are you doing? Looking forward to your tuning approach. Matthias, come on, come on. You, you have like, you have the awesome drum sound. Um, you've got your masters, your masters from the WEC school. Um, all right, so this is the 10. For those of, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we're putting clear, clear ambassadors on top. And there's already clear ambassadors on the bottom, all right? So this seems pretty loose. And you know, like the, you know, the Weckl approach that I started with is like, I mean, it's like the bottom head higher than the top, you know, and sometimes that works and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It's like, that's kind of the beauty of it. It's so subjective. That's not bad. So now at this point, I'm like, I'm singing fills in my head. I'm singing, that doom, you know, stack a doom, that. You know, that's, that's not bad in terms of a starting point. Let's see how we did in terms of the interval. Yeah, see, the top head's higher. Interesting. Yeah, definitely higher. So let's lower, let's lower the top head a little bit. I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe the, the tone should be driven by the top head. I mean, I liked how it sounded. I'm just like, we're just experimenting at this point. Okay, bottom head is higher now. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah. It's a little low for my taste, but it's definitely doing the thing. So at this point, we try to raise the pitch maybe by, low, by uh, tightening the bottom. I don't want to choke it out, you know? And I mean, for better or for worse, I'm not, I'm not trying to keep each lug completely consistent. You know, I do the thing that, you know, to compare tone of, of, of each lug if you get close to the, you know, where the lug is. Um, and I'm not trying to get it perfect. You know, I'm not, I'm not Terry Bozio where it's like, oh, this is a C sharp, you know? It's like, that's not my thing. So, okay. Okay, so the bottom head is still higher. Let's see how this sounds. That's not bad. I can definitely feel the, the, the bottom head doing the tone and the top head is just kind of resonating. The top head's not doing as much tone. I mean, where I turn this in relation to, to my talkie mic is like, you know what, I can turn off my talkie mic and, and see what it sounds with just the overheads. There we go. That's just the overheads that are not like placed in any scientific way at all. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put this back on the thing. This is the part where like drums are gonna be hitting each other and and uh, it could be potentially embarrassing. <laughs> Let's see. All right. All right. Um, all right. Well, so much for getting the the logo like straight. Now that's like way choked. Yeah, the bottom head's too tight. But who knows, like, you know, get these things mic'd up and this stuff might be singing, you know? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to 
I'm gonna take down the bottom head a hair and bring up the top head a hair. It's interesting, like hitting the drum here versus putting it on the on the thing. Big surprise, it sounds different, right? Duh. We're kind of starting over, like loose tension and then increasing, loose tension and then increasing. Lesson learned for the next drum, and eh? we'll just put it on the rack like sooner. See, now it sounds like crap. Yep. Okay, so the top head, oh, there we go. This low was really loose. All right, so let's go back. Again, this is the ton, this is the ten, and this is why I started with the ten because if we can't get the ten sounding good, then we might as well give up. Okay, loose and then tight again. Yeah, see, interesting. The bottom head's way too tight. All right, let's decrease the bottom head. Maybe it'll sound good if I just hold it in my hand and just play it like that for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, it's too tight. All right, what are folks saying? Bobby, let's be careful not to hit the wood through the head. Yeah, these are single ply. back on and then raise the top head of hair yep that's right drums hitting each other all the gear heads are going crazy deal with it all right we're getting there that's better eh all right we're getting there and this one's really loose let's get that up a bit Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's too high. Get in there. Get in there. Ah, get in there. with that Doom. that's kind of the middle that's like the tone that I want uh, so hopefully it doesn't sound too bad here because uh, it sounds decent so we'll use that as our base and then we'll just you know go from there and we'll get the 15 sounding really low and and I don't know what's gonna happen with the eight all right let's see what folks are saying da -da 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 -da. recently bought one 1980 recording customs nice uh, what are you doing these drums uh, I'm tuning them. Governor's good at tuning drums, doesn't normally say they're good at tuning drums. Um, yeah, like I said before, I don't think that I'm good. I'm just, I just like, I like the sound that I get. That's almost my kit you're working on, yeah. See, I'm, uh, the recording customs from the 80s, man. They seem to have a thing, Weck play 810. Yeah, Weck had three rack toms for, for one of his eras. Um, Matthias. Let's see, Stanton is on YouTube now. Oh man, I'm competing with Stanton. I, I think Stanton subscribed to my channel actually a while ago. I was surprised to see. He's obviously an amazing drummer. Um, 
A pearl tuning key, someone said yes. Come on, we've all got millions of keys sitting around. I've got I've got a bunch of keys. I'm actually lucky there's one here. If I lose this, we're in trouble. Um, be careful not to hit the wood, be it through the head. On a single plier bottom, every drum head reacts differently. Yes, it's true. This is a hot room too. I was gonna turn on the air. Uh, I had the air on, um, but you know, the sound of it. So I'm actually, I'm actually hot for you guys. So it doesn't sound bad. Um, yeah, these are Yamaha recording customs. The Toms, the Phoenix uh, bass drum is still on. All right, so we did the 10. Um, let's do the eight. I'm not ready to confront the 12 because I've always struggled with the 12, to be honest. Um, all The whole time I had these drums, whenever I tuned them up uh, before gigs or, or whatever, the 12 was always the stubborn child. Uh, and I, I, I never got it to a place where I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I was always struggling with it and I was like, uh, you know, and I just, I got it to a place where it was good enough. But then I would get on the gig and on the gig, it would sound great. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, from room to room, it depends, you know. But we're going to do the eight now. All right. I'm kind of excited about the eight. It's been a while since, since, um, since I've played with an eight. This is like, obviously like old Steve Smith style. Um, or even new Steve Smith style. So, you know, here you go. This is your Yamaha recording custom eight inch uh, standard, standard depth. Um, all right, there's an emperor on it now. We're gonna take it off and put on the, the ambassador. Um, That last stream I did was really fun. I don't know if you guys saw that on my channel. Uh, it was my birthday. It was June 26th. And uh, man, that was fun. It's a fun thing to do on my birthday. So I play drums, hang out with folks virtually. Uh, and it's nice to, like, I haven't, I haven't touched my drums since then. Literally, this is the first time I've been in this room since June 26th because I'm not, I'm not a professional working drummer. <laughs> uh, I'm a video game designer. And man, I've been working a lot. Um, I work at Infinity Ward, and we're trying to finish up uh, Modern Warfare 2. And so, uh, yeah, just working hard trying to do that. Here you go. Here's the Remo Emperor. See you later. And uh, we'll dump the crap out of here. Put this on here. Kind of rinse and repeat. Here's your here's your 8-inch shell. There you go. That's what that looks like. It's beautiful shell, really. Like, Yamaha really does make beautiful drums. Everything is so clean. Um, if I cared more, I would like, you know, get a cloth and wipe the edges and get the crap out and stuff. Um, but alas. All right, so this is going on kind of like so. So we'll put the, the top of the thing kind of like so. Let's see. I, I can't get behind 10, 12, 16. Well, you know what's interesting? I mean, I, I'm all right with 10, 12, 16. And truth be told, like, you know, most of these drums, not all of them, but most of them, um, when I ordered them, the recording customs was like, I don't know, the second drum kit I ever bought. Like, I grew up in New Jersey um, until, I lived there until I was 21. And during my late teens, you know, I was playing a lot of drums. And I was all into my Neil Peart phase and stuff. But then I got into like Jazz Fusion and Steve Smith and Weckl and Vinny and all that stuff. And so I bought a set of recording customs. Um, and so I had... Like I said, 10, 12, 13, 15. I don't know why I got a 15. Honestly, I don't. Um, oh, we didn't, we didn't hit the bottom head. Let's do that. That's important. Let's take this off. Um, and this 15, man, I, I'm looking forward to tuning it up because it's a special drum. I have several friends that back in the 90s and early 2000s, like whenever I gigged with that 15, people were like, good Lord, what is that? You know? And I wanted to get a 15 when I got the Phoenix, but they didn't have it. They didn't have it, so I didn't do it. Also, it's mounted. It doesn't have legs, unlike my um, Phoenix, which does have legs. Oh, man, there's a lot of crap between the head and the shell on this. If we were if we were good drummers, <laughs> we would <t> <laughs> we would take this head off and give the shell a wipe down. But we're not going to do that. Ah, 
And you know what else? Super, super embarrassing factory head. <laughs> Come on, you guys. It's the 8. I hardly ever use this. All right? I'm inclined to leave the, leave the bottom head off and, like, mount it, like, you know, up here, like, frigging Neil Peart style. Um, yeah, like I said, I traded a drum for, for this 8. I did not buy it. When I moved to L.A., I had 10, 12, 13, 15, and my roommate had, the like, literally the Weckl set up from, like, back to basics. He had the 810, and I was intrigued by the 8, and I wanted to try an 8, and so we traded. He wanted my... He wanted my uh, 13, and so he took my 13, and I took his 8. Uh, are you here? Kurt, Kurt's been to some of these uh, streams. As soon as I put these drums up, I was going to take a picture and send it to Kurt. Kurt is the roommate that I traded these drums with. This was Kurt's 8. All right, so we're cranking the bottom head is what we're doing right now. To kind of stretch it out, even though it's not new, but just to do it. All right. But there is kind of something special about like a well-tuned eight. It's interesting to see how folks are using like the kind of higher pitch drums. Like I noticed recently, like Todd Zuckerman has, I think he's got like, you know, he's got like eight, 10, 12, blah, blah, blah. But over on the left, on, to the left of his height, he has another, um, <laughs> He has another uh, drum, it's like a six or something that he kind of like, you know, uh, uses once in a while, but obviously you can't do like big rolls down it. Um, Michael Bambrick with the $10 donation. Michael, thank you so much. Appreciate it. If anyone else is interested in supporting the channel, you can hit that little dollar sign or that little smiley. It's called a super. And you can support the channel. We are putting funds together for a new laptop and a new recording unit and a new camera switcher. So that would be great. Don't laugh at me and my factory heads, okay? I honestly, like, I considered not even telling you guys. It's going to make me regret it. Oof. I should really, like, I should have ordered two new heads. I kind of regret, kind of regret doing that now. And, and like, the more... Well, the head's not dead. All right. So remember what happened last time. The bottom head kind of choked out the drum, so we're not going to tune it too high. Getting there. Doom, doom. And then a little, just a hair higher. Then we're going to put the top head on, and we're going to put it on the rack a little sooner. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's put the top head back on. So again, Remo Clear Ambassador is going on right now. So tightening, tightening as much as I can with just the fingers. That's like the starting position. Make sure the head's not cracked. Make sure it's not broken. Make sure blah, blah, blah. Look for red flags, etc. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's put it on the rack like right away and see what happens. We'll start doing a tuning pass from the rack. From the arm, rather. I don't have a rack. I've never had a rack. Okay. Well, let's crank it first, like we did before. So this is so much easier. It's silly for me not to put it on the thing sooner. I should at least have two drum keys. I think there's a drum key over there, but I don't feel like unclipping my microphone to get it. You guys are starting to see a pattern here. I'm pretty lazy. All right, so it's cranked. Cranked. It's cranked. Okay. So now we're going to take it back down. 
Again, this is Yamaha Raconi Custom, 8 inch, standard size. These drums are really old. Whew, there's a lot of resistance there. Oof. This thing is not going quietly. Alright. Alright, dead. Alright, so back on. Now we're now we're actually tuning. <laughs> Oof, that's really high. I think we definitely want to go with the bottom head driving the tone uh, on this one. Should have put these loves like some folks put their loves in Vaseline. I've heard of that. Ah! I'm just embarrassing myself. Yeah, the bottom head's even tighter than the top. It's hard to gauge the tension from the resistance of the lug because, I mean, these drums have just been sitting for a while, and so there's just a lot of tension on the lug as soon as you turn it, and so it's hard to tell if it's tight or not. Oh, all right. Hello. Yeah, bottom head's still lower. All right. Maybe we should bring the bottom head up a hair. Sorry. Yeah, I think we should. Actually, I actually kind of like the tone of the bottom. Just gonna loosen the top. Top's pretty loose already. See, that's the thing about the, the loose top head. is um, you don't want it to be so loose that it doesn't resonate. It's not a bad tone, it's just not very resonant. I guess that's what we should expect for a factory bottom head. Oof. What are the biggest odds that Steve leaves this stream up when it's done? This is the bottom head now that we're tuning. The pressure's on. Can Steve tune himself out of this rabbit hole that he's put himself in? Okay, there you go. Bottom head is higher. Yeah, we need a new head for the bottom, you guys. If we wanted to do the heavy lifting for the tone. All right, we're going to leave the bottom alone. Go back to the top. And I had to put on the old school, uh, the lo really long like mounting arms um, to get the distance and the, 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 the options that I wanted in terms of, you know, distance away from me, etc. Ah! All right, we'll get it. Don't worry. Bear with me. See, a lot of this is just just kind of repeating the same process, like kind of going back to one and then giving it another try. Going back to one, giving it another try until you're happy with it. How's that sound? <laughs> Yeah, I really think the bottom head needs to be, like, loose. Oof. Maybe we should come back to this one. Oh, all right. All right. Not. 
Not as horrible as it was. It's a good starting point, at least. It's a good starting point. Once we get everything like on and in a, in a decent starting point, then then you can tune, you know tune the drums like relative to each other. You know that's when we're kind of thinking about like the overall sound and not just like per drum per lug. Not horrible. Yeah, so you take the snares off. <laughs> Duh, Steve. Where the 10 is. The 8, not so much. We're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there and come back to it. Okay? Um, let's see what happens with the 12. All right, since we just had a struggle with the 8, maybe the 12 will give us a break. Let's see what folks are saying. Vaseline is cranked to my phone, set overnight. Yeah, see, everyone has their different approaches. I really like that. You know, probably some useful tips in here. Um, and the reason why I went with, you know, um, ambassadors is just because I'm not, I'm not playing enough to worry about like them because they, they don't last as long as you know the double ply ones. But I don't play um, often enough to worry about that, uh, and they're the most resonant, you know, at this point. Um, let's see, Pablo Swanson in the house. What's up, Bobby Vincent? Um, <laughs> you align your logos with the mounts. I've been doing it wrong all these years. <laughs> yeah, right. So good, uh, consistent setup. Um, oh, the hex rack. Yeah, maybe one day. Yamaha makes great hardware. Noble and Cooley snare drum. Yes, it is. Asks Corey. Corey Bondurant. Yeah. Noble and Cooley snare drum. Um. Yeah, this drum sounds great in this room. That's why I'm using it. You know, obviously, I've got a bunch of other snare drums. Um, let's see. Just the other bass drum part. I like this. You guys are chatting it up. Well, Platt, if you have any grease, you can put in the tension on the rod holes. Yes. Well, Platt. Um, I don't know if I should put up the China or the, the Azuka with the recording customs well for the gush. Um, yeah, look at Bobby. He's like, it sounds good. Just hit it harder. It's true, eh? <laughs> Honestly, find the need. Plastic washers, isolating. Metal metal contact. Let's see, Bobby Vincent. Uh, well plowed. Now, Steve, make sure you only tune in perfect major intervals. <laughs> Absolutely no minor. <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh man, getting better. Yes. Uh, wait, someone was adding some folks. Let's see. Uh, I do the same. All right, you guys are chatting it up. I'm just gonna let you chat and get back to it. All right. So, the twelve. The dreaded. The dreaded 12. <laughs> um, yeah, not not stock head on the bottom. Not factory head, I should say. So let's take off the top. Emperor. I, I honestly don't remember the last time I played these drums. I got the Phoenix pretty much as soon as it came out. It was actually, it was like a perfect storm um, when I ended up with Yamaha. Uh, as like a, a Yamaha artist, um, Peter Erskine actually was very, very uh, super instrumental in putting me in touch with them. He used to post on House of Drumming all the time. Uh, Houseofdrumming.com is my drum forum that's still up. Um, it's like old school drum forum. You know, most people chat on like Facebook and whatever now, Reddit, etc. And I do too, but you know, for us old schoolers, for us gray beards, <laughs> as I've heard it referenced, gray beards, which is funny. Um, okay, see you later. Um, yeah, we had the old school forum, and uh, I had a popular one, and it's still up. Here's the here's the twelve, gorgeous drum. Uh, anyway, Peter used to post on there a fair bit, and uh, I ran into him a couple of times. Went to a bunch of his shows. I actually, took a lesson with Peter in the early two thousands um, at his place. And uh, I've seen him gig a bunch. And we're actually from the same area. 
He's from um, a city called Linwood, New Jersey, and uh, I'm from a, a city that's close to that. And so I think we may have been born in the same hospital. Anyways, we're, we're both from like South Jersey, and, and I've seen him a bunch, and I took a lesson with him, and he used to post on my forum, and, and we had a chat one day, and I was like, hey, you know, could you, you know, put me in touch with the Yamaha guys? And he was like, sure. And so this was like before YouTube, actually. And so I made like a DVD, like a highlight reel, and I gave it to him and asked him to, to, to pass it on to the Yamaha folks. So we didn't, we didn't, once again, we forgot to hit the bottom head. You know what? Don't care. Don't care. Let's crank the bottom head anyway. Um, anyways, he put me in touch with Yamaha, and it was a good time. Uh, because House of Drumming was really popular, and the guys that were the artist relation guys there at the time, um, this guy Joe Testa, who's now with Zildjian, uh, Zildjian slash Vic Firth, um, uh, super nice, and we, you know we hung out a couple of times, and they brought me over to the factory, and and um, and he was this was right before the Phoenix came out, and he was like you know, don't get anything new yet, like wait for this new thing to come. And so I did, and uh, man, I'm glad I did. As soon as it came out, I got a, I got a set through them, and uh, that's the set that I play, the, the PHX. Matthias has a set of PHX. All right, so we crank the bottom head, right? Yes. Bottom head of the 12 cranked. Now let's take it down a little bit. Um, you know, Peter Erskine's got a really, he's got a great streaming setup. He posts really good online content. Really good quality stuff. I saw an interview with him recently uh, where he was talking about playing uh, with Steely Dan. Man, it was super interesting. He was pretty candid about, like, you know, some songs that he played that he didn't like. Um, what was the song? I forget. There was one song he said he really didn't like playing. Um, and he said, like, one night he, he sped it up by, like, one BPM, like, on purpose. And the next day, like, Donald Fagan called him out. <laughs> like, like, was it faster? Don't do that. And so, you know, he said it in like a complimentary way. And I, I love stories like that. That stuff's like super interesting. But yeah, I, I just love the guys that have been doing it for decades. You know, guys that have been like, you know, doing it for decades, like being a professional drummer. You know, uh, I think that's amazing. I just have so much for, respect for, for the veterans. And Erskine's definitely one of the veterans. Okay. Yeah. I'm not even sure like what I want the 12 to sound like. I just want it to be in between the 10 and the 15. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a thing. I can already tell. I had the Erskine uh, the DCI video, Everything is Timekeeping, uh, part. He did two of them back in the day. I forget which one I had. I think I had one. Ugh. Why am I even bother hitting this? Like the top head's on. It's not even like I'm being so ridiculous right now. All right, let's just crank the top head and see what's what. And we'll work on both of them at the same time. Yes, come in. Hello, sir. Hello. We're live. Okay. Uh, I just took Benny out of the potty. Okay, thank you. And I took all of your towels and floor mats from your bathroom and they are in the washer. Awesome. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Cool. Uh, not closing. Okay. I'm going to do my fucking best to not be there until closing. S sounds which great. Which happens. Yeah. And I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. See ya. Have a good night. All right, we're cranking the top head. This is, this is the top, it's cranked. Should we crank the bottom too? Let's just crank it all. 
I don't G A F right now. Because I know this thing's going to go to battle with me. So. so this is where we start, 12. You're cranked on both sides. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready to do battle with the 12, you guys. Let's see. Drum verdict says, "What's up, Steve?" Pablo Swanson. So straight from the horse's mouth. Pablo Swanson. I thought that was so cool. Amazing. The range of those aren't recording customs. But then he was Steely Dan would have been. Yes, I agree. I agree. I've been thinking about doing like these streams, like not from the drums, but like from my desktop, where I just queue up a bunch of like songs that I like with cool drumming and just like play the song and talk about. Talk about the drumming, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I thought that would be really cool. And it's funny because the music that I would play is like this old, old like 90s GRP stuff that like Weck and Vinny are on. So it would be like no copyright. <laughs> no one would like charge copyright or anything. Oh man. We're just doing the same thing over and over at this point. Ooh. Ooh, what's going on? That's not bad. Oh, that eight sounds horrible. Ooh, man, the bottom head's... Oh, it's actually not cranked. I thought it was cranked. The top head's higher again. See, once again, I like the sound, but the top head's higher. Yeah, see, that's just a little higher than I would like. So let's put it on the thing and take it from there. Wait, before we do that, should we? I'm going to lower the bottom just a hair. <laughs> see, I'm always reminded of this old Far Side comic. Back when comic strips were a thing and comics were a thing. Anyway, it's like the guys that are chiseling the face out of the Sphinx, you know, and the nose is off and on the ground. And there's two guys and one's like... One's like mad at the other because he chiseled too much. And he's like, just one more, you said. It's not good enough. I had to do one more and then you ruin it, right? This is, this is kind of what I'm feeling right now. Like I had it in a decent place. Well, when you know it, the drum that we thought would be the worst and give us the hard time is actually surprising. All right, let's see what's what. Again, I got the old school arms on here so I could like get the length I wanted. I wanted a really good like low symmetrical even like setup, you know, like Gavin Harrison, Steve Smith style. Whoa. I'm going to take it down a hair. Oh, man. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. 10 to 12 are in good places. The 8 is not in a good place. All right, let's do the 15. Uh, because the 15 is so big... Well, let's see what we can do. Because uh, we've got to get this. Maybe I'll just, let's just check on the bottom head of the 15. Let's just check on it, see where it's at. Because I like my low drums to be like low, like thunderous low. Like, not, like almost, I'm okay with the interval between the mid and the low being like really big. Because I just, I don't care. I want the low drum to be like thunderous, like literally blast, 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 you know, like that's what I want. I don't need it to be like, oh, equal, you know, third to the mid drum. Like, don't care. Just want it to sound a certain way. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just do a quick pass on the bottom head here. Just, I'm not going to crank it. I am just going to make sure that there's like a respectable amount of tension. 
specifically that it's not like super loose. Like some lugs, like literally they get like really loose as you play. And this, these drums haven't been played in a long time and so I'm just making sure that's not the case. This is the thing with these really deep drums. Like, even if you were going to try to get the bottom head to like do the, to drive the tone, you know, like I don't even know if that's a good idea because the, the heads are just so far apart from each other, you know. Um, and so the top head, I think, is probably should probably do the heavy lifting. All right, so we're going to take off the the emperor. Yeah, you can see like the resistance. See. Like these drums and the 15 is it's got a lot of love so I wish that when this was all done I could just like turn on the mics and just show you like that sound but I can't because the mics aren't even on obviously like the the, the Tom the individual mics um, and if they were on, I don't think I can... Oh, actually, you know what? If I set up... If I had OBS set up correctly, I might be able to, but I don't. I don't. I really got to get, like, some... I got to get my setup so that I can play along to music and stuff on the stream, you guys. All these streams I have with just me playing by myself is, like... I mean, it is what it is, but... Got to get some music in there. Sorry, we're trying to get the... Trying to get the new head here. All right, here we go. Here's the old head. See you later. And we're going to put the new head on. And hopefully get the rim on so that no lugs fall to the ground. All right, nice. All right, we did it. Ta-da. All right, how are we doing on sound? Everyone, you can still hear me talking, whatever. <laughs> Here's the, if, raise the A just a hair and it'll work. Yeah, we'll give it a try. Okay, I need to run. Won't wait for an answer. And he won't wait for an answer. Sorry, Bobby, did you ask a question or something? I think you guys are chatting amongst yourselves, right? Comedy tuning. Uh, Steve, I guess you already have heard that interview. Pablo Swanson must apply the mean tuning. Da, da, da. Sorry, I'm just like, who the f was that? Caught on camera. I have nothing to hide. I, I, you know, there's people here. <laughs> um, yeah, agreed. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the Erskine interview still. Let's see. See my prayer comments, Steve? I guess you already heard that interview. Yeah, I got to go back and reread these. As I go back and, like, watch these streams, like, th this part that I'm doing right now, like, the parts where I, <laughs> like, I'm just looking at the screen and reading questions, like, it's it's not it's not terribly exciting to watch. And I try to be cognizant of, of, of you know, the... The, the stream being watchable and, and entertaining because people, you know, they're so, everyone's got limited attention span and there's so much stuff to, to look at. So, uh, anyone watching that hasn't subscribed to my channel, there's a lot of drumming content on there, so I would recommend you check it out and subscribe. I'm trying to get my subscriber count up. I've got 22,000-ish right now, but, I mean, you know how it is. Most of my videos have an average of, like, 2,000 views-ish. Um, but there's ads and stuff on there, you know, so if anyone wants to support the channel, you know, the, the opportunity's there. All right, so all the lugs are on. Let's crank it. Let's stretch out this baby. So, Steve, I'd love to book a lesson with you. I'm in L.A., says Simon Riley Drums. Okay, Simon, email me at steveholmes at gmail.com. Anyone that's interested in lessons, this is it. This is the drum room. This is at my house. So we give lessons here. Um, 
steveholmes at gmail.com and uh, we'll work something out. Or we can do a Zoom thing if you want. All right, this is good. This is good. I'm starting to get a good feeling about this. All right, that's cranked. It's cranked. All right. How do you find using a bigger kit playing traditional grip? Uh, I did it for a really long time, says Steven Turner at 244 two minutes ago. Uh, I used to play with three rack toms like for a long time. Uh, I don't mind it so much, really. Uh, if you set up the kit, you know, so you're not fighting yourself, and if you have a competent traditional grip, then, you know, you just work out the kinks and work on, you know, the motions and, you know, that's the thing. All right, top head, top head's cranked, right? So this is gonna sound bad. Um, yeah, see, you can hear it like stretching out. Let's, uh, let's step on it. Boom, okay. See, I pulled a Simon Phillips. Stepped on my drum head. Uh, it's not very interesting to view it like when it's on the rack thing, so I'll do as much as I can like from this so that it's not boring for you guys. Oh, did you email me already? Simon Riley Jones, so there's no dot or anything, just like Steve Holmes at gmail.com. Um, how do you find using, oh yeah. Yo, Steve, I'd love, okay, we talked about that. Don't sweat it, it's not boring. Um, all the lugs are on. <laughs> oh, oh my God, I see what you're doing there. All the lugs are, all the lugs are on. And the kid is red. And the kid is red. Okay, so we're taking these down and then just tuning back up to like just a little tension. That's the starting point, okay? Yeah, that one's cranked. So we go back down to like nothing and then uh, till I get a little resistance. And I can tell too, like when the wrinkles are out. But on floor toms, honestly, wrinkles aren't, I don't think they're a deal breaker. Necessarily. If it sounds good. I suppose that goes for any drum. Okay. That's too high. And the 10's in a great place. Ah. Yeah, I need some tape or something on there, right? And it's a little high pitch, so I'm gonna take it down a hair because like I said, I like that low, kind of low thunderous kind of thing. That thing resonates for days, you hear that? Let's take all the snares. Sorry, the drum key's on there. Loosening a little, loosening and going back, loosening all the way and then just going back to right. As soon as there's a little tension, like I stop, right? I loosen all the way and I go back, a oh, little tension, I stop. Little tension. Yeah, see that's low. I got a little tension, stop. Yeah, it might be too low actually. Is there such a thing? Rattle here, damn. What is that? Is it the badge? Oof, that's nasty. Is it touching the, oh, I think it, oh, you know what, it might be, is it touching the, no, that's not it. Something's rattling. Is it the memory lug? So it's the kind of thing, 
Like in the studio, if you're in the recording studio, like you really got to worry about that. But honestly, for a guy that like, oh, I stream on YouTube for, for 30 people once every two weeks. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good starting point. The eight needs help. Let's 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 see if we can help the eight. Yeah, yeah it's it's just choked out. We got to find out what's choking it out. But these three, like the main three, I think it's a good starting point. Ah, yeah, it's a bottom head. Yeah, we need a new head for the bottom, you guys. It's like, this head's ancient. So maybe we try not to go for like, too much of a high tone on this. Oh, I think, I think we may have improved it at least. Yeah, down. <laughs> oh my God. Sounds lush. Extreme you great interval though. Can't hear the rattle. Never got all the age toms. It's hard to get the eight to resonate long, it's true. But I'm curious like how these drums are gonna sound mic'd up. That's really what I'm curious about. And maybe I can like leave the stream going while they put on the mics. I mean obviously you won't hear the mic blah. Um, but we can at least put them on. Truth is I don't have enough mics for all three of these toms, so as embarrassing as it is, the um, the hi hat mic is probably going to have to like double for an eight, for a tom for the, sorry, a mic for the high tom. All right. Ugh, man, who would have thought the eight would be the trouble one? Everyone except me, apparently. Oh, okay. All right. Ah. Yeah, I don't even know if the eight's worth the trouble, you guys. I'm, I'm like, I'm excited about like this, you know, but like the eight is just like fine. Yeah, maybe if we crank, let's just crank the top head. I feel like this is the drum version of like, you know, uh, who's the painter guy with the afro, you know? It's like, oh, let's just, let's just crank it. Yeah, see? Obviously that sounds bad, but I think maybe it might be valuable to, to just get it in a different place because then we start from that place and maybe we can get to the good place from A instead of from B, you know? Ooh. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, I think we did it. Bloom, ba bloom. Yeah, let's see what's what. All right, I'm gonna turn off the talkie mic and we'll just get overheads.
All right. I think that's a pretty good starting place. I think we, uh, I think we can check the box. I feel excited. That's a good sign. Like I'm excited to play these drums now. We just gotta, you know, um, decide what we're gonna do for symbols because uh, we're transforming into a new thing. Actually, where we're gonna put the ride is, uh, it's kind of key. Like I need it, I need it to be like as close and as low as possible to accommodate my old man's shoulder. But in terms of tom positioning, I feel like this is, I feel like this is pretty good. Um, let's see what folks are saying now. Cruise resonance ain't. Most well, I personally love the sound of the eight. Actually, the eight sounds the best to me now. But leave it, man. Sounds really nice. Thank you. Raise it a hair, just higher pitch. Plus, new heads will detune. That's true. Um, yep, it sounds like uh, Mike. <laughs> Mike D. Oh man, you guys. Mike D's a coworker at Infinity Ward. Taught me a lot about game design. What's up, Mike? Um, let's see. Success. Overhead sound is good. Yeah, I mean, taking off the talking mic and just turning on the overheads. And it's like fun, you know? Like, I've been playing a four piece for, I don't know, a couple years. Like, I just needed to, to, to go back to basics, you know? And when I see four piece, I mean, like, rack tom, floor tom. That's it, you know? And so. That's like extreme one end. And so now I wanted to do the extreme of the other, you know? So we're doing all three rectoms. It sounds pretty good, you know? And it's interesting because like years have gone by and so what I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, this setup will spark new ideas. You know, that's part of the reason why I did the, 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 the switch last time, you know? Like, just where I'm coming from now in terms of my priorities and the things I like to do, let's see what I do with this, you know? I have a feeling I'm going to get sick of it. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Like, I would not take this to the gig or anything. Like, this is just ridiculous. But it's fun, you know? We, we have the opportunity now where we can, like, just, hey, let's just take out our stuff and experiment and see what's what. Um, Bobby Vincent, yeah. Mount your ride vertical. That's not going to happen, you know? Like, ugh. Ugh. I, I, I just can't bring myself to do to do that Virgil does that man you get Virgil's low is really really his ride is really low and I'm just you know it makes a ton of sense because you know I've said this before I'll say it again you know like all the you know the guys that that you know the heroes that I like you know Weck and Vinny and those guys like with their with their you know there's definitely a correlation between ride height and age you know the younger you are the higher it is you know and the higher the higher the thing is the more of your shoulder you're using you know, that's why people lower it, really. The people that start high and they lower it, it's because the lower you put your arm, you put your hand on your shoulder, shoulder, you'll feel. You're using less of your shoulder the lower your arm goes, you know? And so it's easier, you know? It's just straight up easier, you know? Unless you're Mike Mangini, <laughs> apparently, who at this point I'm, I'm convinced is bionic. Because <laughs> that guy's just like, <laughs> come on! Come on, you guys. Come on. Mike Mangini. Maybe it's a diet plan. It's got to be like, this is how I'm going to stay healthy. This is how I'm going to keep my muscles, like, built. You know? Like, you know, uh, horizontal Eric Gravat style. Eric Gravat, he was a big guy, wasn't he? Man, videos of that guy. Underrated. All the videos I've seen of Eric Gravat, he's like, the, he's, he's, he's like old school, right? Like, the old, like one of these drummers from a while back. Super impressed by it. footage of that guy. Let me see your approach to where the ride ends up. Can we do that before you go? Yeah, I'll try. I mean, the ride's over there. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got this overhead mic thing here. This is the thing, like, I, yeah, I just need to, like, just move everything. I, I'm going to have a problem with the snare mic. I can already tell. Um, I, it may or may not fit between these toms. And I might have to put it, like, between the hat and the, the tom, maybe. I think I'll have to do that. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, man, sound, sounding pretty good, I think. That's the test, right? That doon stega doon.
Will, that was the first gouge of the Recording Customs 2022. We just did it. We did the first gouge. Uh, let's see other issues. Uh, Steve Turner, interested to see where your left hand crash ends up. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, same-ish. You know, it's just really high now because I'm getting stands, stands uh, situated, you know. But it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the same-ish. I'm curious, like, what we should do for splashes. I feel like we have more room for, like, splashes. So, I mean, again, this is just, like, for fun. Like, for funsies. You know, this is not like, oh, you know, we're going to go on the gig and play our jazz stuff and coffee shop gig. You know, we're just having fun. Favorite ride, symbol size, probably 20. 15 sounds like it's really settled nicely now. Yeah, see, I'm telling you guys, this 15, it's the stuff of legend. See, look, here's the Azuka. Let's do a gush. Let's do a gush with the... Okay, I'll turn on the overheads, right? The Maiden Gush. <laughs> oh, man. The way John Tevez has been setting up recently. Yeah. Um, gush. Yeah, the Gush is like floor tom and cymbal together, like a China type cymbal. Oh, we've got the China here, too, actually. Yeah. What's up, 19 inch K China? What's up? You know what? I'd be curious to what you guys have to say about this. A lot of the old footage of guys with like K Chinas, the K was on. <laughs> Will plant my. My job is complete. The K was on the inside. You know, like videos like Steve Smith and stuff, pictures. Like, I, I always wondered if, like, only the, the name guys had that. Because I never, I've never in real life seen a K China with the K on the inside. Only on the outside. So I feel like, like Zildjian reserved that for, like, the big guys. You know? So next time I'm over there, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask them about that. I'll be like, man, I want a K China with a K on the inside. I always thought that was cool. Um... Yeah, so the ride, we're, we're just going to go as low as possible, you know, is what we're going to do. Uh, I guess I have to take off my mic and go get it. So let's do that. Mic's coming off for a few minutes. I can leave it on. Maybe it'll pick something up. That's probably not a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like it needs to be it needs to be like left 
more and kind of flatter. You know, this is this is what I'm thinking. Cheers. Time for a drink. Got to reset the microphone. Yeah, I got to reset all the mic positions. Um, what overheads are these? Uh, the the overheads are from like the pretty budget. Like I did not. These are not like top of the line mics. Like I don't have a mic endorsement or anything. Um, I bought. Uh, a pack of mics from AKG called the Groove Pack. This is a long time ago now. And I had two overheads, three toms, and a kick. And that's what I'm still using, you know. So if there's any mic companies out there that want to try to get in on this, um, steveholmes at gmail.com. So, all right, let's see what's what. A little less. Whoa! Oh, yeah. See, this is... This is why you guys tune in for these moments, right? These moments. Look at that. Come on. That was impressive. Um, I don't like the, the, the vertical. Like, I kind of want it to be, like, more tilted, you know? And maybe lower, but actually, that's not horrible. That's, that's not horrible. There we go. So I'm in a decent starting place. Like, it's higher than I'm used to, obviously. Um, but I mean, can you reach the bell? Yeah, I, uh, let's, let's try. I mean, I'm not really, I mean, like. Yeah, I mean, it's there. We'll see how long this lasts, you know? I mean, when I stream normally, you know, and I play, I play for like, I don't know, like 10, more like 20 minutes, really. 20 minutes of improv at the beginning of the stream. So, uh, so we'll see. Maybe now move the 15 a touch to your right and bring the 12 in on the mount. You should be able to get the ride a touch closer. Bring it in. What, like, move the 12 down? If I move the 12 in... Yeah, it's just going to raise it. I mean, I see what you're saying. There's not a lot of room left. I mean, that's made, this is about as low as it'll go. You know? I mean, now we're just messing. Now we're, now we're really, we're tempting the Jenga gods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but see, now it's like, I don't, I thought about going like flatter, but uh, the flat thing... I'm not really into the flat thing. I kind of like more of the angle, you know. But I mean, even with just this little adjustment, there's there's some room to like lower this guy a smidge. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's not hitting either. Yeah, it's not hitting at all. That's the thing. Like you crash the rides, it's like it's gonna hit the, you know. Yeah. But now the question is like, is it in the way of the of the tom? Like going down? Not really. You 
know, this is good exercise too, you know? And you put on more drums, it's gonna make you move more. It's like, I'm 50 now. It's good exercise, like for phys physical and um, mental too. Like, you know, keeping track of like, okay, like, uh, you know, you gotta tell, okay, three, 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 okay, two, and two, and like, you gotta, you know, you gotta be sharp to, to play, you know, the kind of stuff that I like to play. Um, move the 12 towards, yeah. Uh, rather than relating the mount itself. Yes, yeah, so we did it. Uh, I feel like, I feel like that, that did it. Um, yeah, so it's a good place. How long have we been streaming? Oh, a minute and uh, an hour and 20. Let's go back and see. Yeah, Gavin, I mean, oh, man, Gavin Harrison. Um, I had I had lunch with him like one time. He, he too like posts on House of Drumming and he reached out to me. This was early 2000s. He was in town with uh, Porcupine Tree. Totally dropping names at this point, don't care. Anyways, he reached out and hey, let's get together. And so we did, we, we hung out and man, it, it was it was a treat. Uh, super nice guy, um, a, just a great drummer. He's one of the guys that I wanted to mention when we were talking about tuning earlier. I wanted to mention that some guys, like and the consistency of their sound, you know? Like every video, their drums sound good and the same. Like there's not a lot of guys that can say that. I mean, especially like the jazzers. Like you can't even say that about Vinny. Really, like Vinny's drums, like they always sound good, but they never, they often don't sound the same. They often don't sound the same. Um, Cause that's just not who he is. Like he's kind of like, yeah, I just want it to sound good. Like whatever, you know, different drums, different heads. But Weck, Weck sound like kind of always the same. A great sound, but you know, very consistent, you know? And I'm not saying like one is better or worse. I'm just making observations, you know? Um, and And I always admired that because it takes so much more effort to make sure you get that same thing every time. And Gavin Harrison, man, whoo. Um, I don't know that, that, I mean, he's got almost like the perfect tom sound. Uh, my favorite drum sound of all time, in terms of like a recording, uh, is probably the first Jing Chi recording uh, that Vinny did with Robin Ford and Jimmy Haslip. Whoo, they have a number of, they have a number of recordings under that name, but the first one, self-titled Jing Chi, that's maybe the perfect drum sound for me. Resonant, big, boomy, clear, powerful. That's such a good power trio record. If you guys don't have the first Jing Chi. Oh, man. Yeah, see, this is what it would be like on the desktop stream. I'd be playing tracks and pointing out cool fills and be making faces and embarrassing myself and stuff. Um, it's going to have to be the 8 over the hat and the 10, 12, just looking at Maybe that 15, yeah, okay, so we talked about that. We moved the ride. That was good. We got the ride set up. Bobby Vincent is using profanity, so it got, it got, it got uh, filtered out. Bobby Vincent said a bad word, you guy. Um, I'm just giving you crap, Bobby. It's fine. Uh, always tend to have the ride on the same angle as the 12, so it's fine. So you're going to reach the, love it, interesting point. Just a gradual education. See, plus Weck has always been super up in the recording stuff. So, I, oh yeah, it's true, man. I can't get over Pablo Swanson. You're talking about Weck and like, you know, in, how he's into the recording thing. The thing that I can't get over about Weck is like, yes, like he's literally a recording scientist and always has been. Like, it's it takes a lot to like just dedicate my life to drumming, be a drumming pioneer. Like, okay, m most guys that do that, like they check that box. But Dave's also like, he's so into the sonic you know, the science of sonic, you know, uh, things that are audible and, 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 uh, you know, he's had a, he's had a home recording, home recording studio for as long as I can remember. I took a lesson with him in the, in the mid nineties. He had a studio then. I think he's always had a studio as long as it's been in LA, which is a long time. Uh, although he's not here anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, the stories of Weck, like when he was young before he made it and he'd be gigging around New York and bringing his drums, but also bringing like <clears throat> a sound system and mics and like setting that shit up and like having a huge drum sound like in clubs, that's nuts. That's like, okay, forget it. Yeah, forget it. That, that's, 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 that just shows like how hard of a worker that guy is and that plays a huge part and how like in his success. Um, someone talked about uh, Novak. My po uh, I've, I've talked about Novak in the past. I love Novak. Love, love, love his playing. 
Um, obviously, you know, Electric Band 2, Paint the World, was kind of a game changer. Um, and which is saying something because he basically, you know, replaced Weck. And so everyone was kind of like what I call like arms folded. And we all, I, I was, I was too, you know. Um, and it, it was really cool because back when he was with the Electric Band 2 and he was like emerging on the scene, this is again like mid 90s, late 90s, he was gigging all over LA and not like, not always with big names. Like he'd be playing it like, I remember I went and see him at this place called Chadney's in Burbank with this local guitar player um, back then. Uh, I forget the guitar player's name. Um, and Chadney's isn't even there anymore. Uh, me and my friend, that same guy, Kurt, that I mentioned, uh, who's traded me this drum. Uh, yeah, we went to see him at Chadney's and I think he, he knew right away <laughs> And we were drummers because he was cool. He was like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, like talking with us and, and thanking us for coming out and stuff. You know, I guess at, at that time we thought maybe like, geez, how did he know we were drummers? And all the while we're probably like Zildjian shirts and like just gawking, you know, and making it super obvious. Um, young people are really dumb, apparently. I was anyway when I was young um, at the risk of offending some of you. That's okay. When you get, when you get older, you get smart-ish. Um, anyways, yes, Love Novak, Paint the World. And then that Time Warp recording, which a lot of people don't talk about. They don't talk about Time Warp. Uh, the Chick Corea uh, Quartet, uh, Patitucci, Novak, Bob Burr, Rest in Peace, and Chick, Rest in Peace. If you guys don't have Time Warp, man, I spent a good year like with that disc and maybe two others. Like, just that's all I listened to for a year was that recording. Um, there's some really cool stuff on there. Really, really. And there's one tune in particular that's just nuts. I always wanted to talk to Gary about how he, you know, just got into that tune and made it come to life. Uh, um, you know, the tune I'm talking about. It's it's like the one with the big drum solo in it. New, oh, I forget what it's called. Anyways, love Novak. I took a lesson with him and, and, you know, he was super nice. I don't even think he charged me once he heard me play. It was super cool. He was like, man, you know, what are you doing here? Um, and I was like, well, you're Gary Novak, so <laughs> start talking <laughs> is what I'm doing here. Um, but yeah, super nice guy. Super nice guy. I've seen him a bunch. Last couple of years at the, uh, at the jazz club downtown LA that closed fairly recently, um, the Blue Whale went and saw him there with a friend of mine, Brandon. And man, we sat like right behind his kit. And like before the show, he was hanging out and we were talking, I was asking him about like, you know, because he was using sonar for a minute, and I was like, hey, you know, what's up with the switching of the drums? And, and you know, he went to Yamaha when the Phoenix came out, and then he went to, then he went to Gretsch. So I'm always curious about the guys that play kind of drum hopscotch, you know? Like Vinny was with Ludwig for like 30 seconds. Like, what? what? It's all crazy. It's all crazy and fun, fun to talk about. Let's see. A lot of interesting points. Just gradual. Yeah, Gavin. It's always. Okay, we talked about Novak. Let's see, normalized audio YouTube got you talking. Helped review. I think Michael did go through some revolution in personal development. I was hearing things in concert and I was either going to stuff. Let's see, Novak actually burns 60 minutes again. Uh, Novak too with Holdsworth. Yeah, really good stuff. Access denied. Uh, Steve already changed heads. Yes, PT, I did. I already changed heads. <laughs> if you just watch from the beginning, we changed all the heads on this kit. Um, so yeah, we've got 50 viewers. Anyone interested in supporting the stream, um, there's a little smiley face and a little dollar sign there. You can leave what's called a super comment or question, and I'll definitely give you a really good answer uh, if you leave a donation. Or if you just want to donate with the dollar sign, um, we're trying to get some funds together to get some more cameras. We need a new laptop, which means we need a new recording unit, because um, I'm using like a really old old system here and I want to get some more cameras you know if I if I get more cameras I have to get a camera switcher if I get a switcher I need like I need some stuff so so anyone that wants to support feel free all support is welcome uh, let's see Steven Turner well thanks for talking about Gary uh, yeah yeah love Gary played all my life 32 now and only joined a band nine years ago the recording process so stiff for me any tips on playing naturally with headphones and a click Um, uh, yes, uh, let's see, Steve Turner says I can't make the donation work. Well, Steve Holmes at, at gmail.com on PayPal, <laughs> if someone really wants to, to go the extra mile. Uh, someone asked about recording. 
uh, Seth Seth Stevenson asked about recording and playing stuff when you're recording. Yeah, I mean, that's like a thing. Like, I've heard stories of people like, you know, like the red light syndrome. Um, Pablo Swanson heard stealing at first. Um, yeah, because it's hard to, I mean, you get into a room, it sounds different. Playing with headphones sounds different. But, I mean, like, unfortunately, like, you kind of said it, you know, um, more practice. Um, Seth, practicing with headphones with a click is is just so valuable uh, and not just for recording purposes um, just in general just to like just to get your time like locked and centered and in a good place um, I always say that that you know I, my goal has always been to practice the drums enough to where you know it doesn't take a lot of effort to do the drumming you know it's 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 like when you lift something that's light, you know, you can just lift it over and over and talk while you lift it. But if you're lifting something that's heavy, it takes a lot of effort. Um, and drumming is the same way, in my opinion. And I'm sorry, some folks have heard me say this before. I say this a lot, but I think it's important. Uh, you know, good feeling grooves and, and I think good sounding drumming is just, you know, comes from sounding relaxed when you play. Uh, and you can't sound relaxed if you're not relaxed and you can't relax uh, if it takes like, you know, 80, 90, 100% effort to do what you're trying to do. And so you just got to practice stuff until it's like the second nature. So you can just do it in your sleep, like walking or driving, you know, uh, driving is a thing, you know, and so many people do it and they don't realize like it takes a long time to get to the point where you can just drive and talk and like whatever people look at their phones and like, you know, operating stuff and, 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 you know, they just kind of assume that, oh, well, of course, you know, well, I mean, no, not of course. You know, um, and the reason why I think it's important, I mean, sounding relaxed, I just think sounds better than than sounding not relaxed, unless your goal is to sound like tense and stuff, which is possible and that's fine. But the point is this, I want brain resources available while I'm playing so that I can use them on non-drumming things. Because when you get out of the practice room, you get to the gig, you get to the studio, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of like... You know, you need your brain to like pay attention to other things and make constant adjustments when you're drumming, constant adjustments. I mean, more so live, right? Um, in terms of like time and where are we in the form and, and what's going on and how do I sound and I can't hear this guy and maybe I'm too loud and I need to play quieter and I need to listen to every, like so there's so many things that, that you want to pay attention to while you're playing. And so the more, you know, brain power you have to dedicate to that stuff, the better. And so in order to do that, you got to free up the brain power, which means you got to practice enough to where it's like it's no big deal, you know. Um, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, you got to get used to how that sounds, like practicing with headphones, with a click. Um, you just got to put in the time, you know, and don't think of it as like, you know, being in like studio mode. Like you just want to play like you always play, hopefully at that level that 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 accommodates that, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about like picking drum parts and stuff specifically for the studio. Like that's a whole other conversation, you know, one that I actually find very interesting, you know, live playing versus like studio playing. Like I, I remember wondering what that was when I was in bands that were both playing live and recording. And, uh, and I think I have a better idea about that now after just listening and analyzing so much pop music, really like classic, you know, classic pop music, you know. Um, just kind of facilitating the tune and playing, you know, not playing busy. And it's interesting, like you can hear like drummers, like in my opinion, um, that that do things because, you know, that just, it's just feels, it's just the second nature thing. Like everyone sits down, they just do the thing. Sometimes, regardless if they're thinking about it or not, like a crash after four bars is a good example. You know, of course. You know, well, maybe not, of course. <laughs> maybe the verse isn't over after four bars, and now you've got to crash in the middle of your verse, and that sounds a little weird, you know? Um, and it's so interesting, like, hearing pop tunes and listening to drummers do that kind of stuff, and instead of just, like, what I call just playing through. You know, that's one of the things I love about Gad, is you just play through. Like, play four bars, and at the end of the fourth bar, don't change anything. Don't change a single thing. Play through into the fifth bar, into the sixth bar, don't change a thing. It's hard, you know? Especially the more like chops you get, the more ideas you get. Like I, I, I have a lot of ideas and whatever, you know? It's like I, you know, that I hate to sound quite like, well, with great power comes great response, but it's true. 
you know that's the thing it's like the more the more things you have and the better you get at using them then the more likely you are to use those things you know um, and that might not be appropriate you know because because what dictates what you play what dictates what you play no one talks about that you know i have a fantasy about spending all this time making like this youtube video like a proper edited one that talks about like how we get to this point where it's like because you know, like playing drums it's like you're basically like i would like to make music that's what you're doing whether you like it or not you're raising your hand you're saying i want to make music okay so let's talk about that <laughs> what does that mean you know i want to do the drum part of the music okay what music you know what what is the song trying to say Who's, who's the composer, you know? Who's to say what's best for the music? You know? You are, apparently. But you told whatever. The composer will have thoughts and you, you get them together. And so I can see my videos like really choppy and whatever. But I'm just fascinated about that. Like no one talks about that process, really. Coming up with drum parts. You know? I, I was very pleasantly surprised to find an artist that I actually got excited about very recently. And, and anyone that's friends with me on Facebook or on, follow me on Twitter... You'll know, because I've been posting about this singer, um, this Dutch singer named Ginny Marker, G-I-N-N-E, Marker. Uh, and uh, Ginny has a recording called Alteria, uh, U-L-T-E-R-I-A. That's a it's like it's a whole album, and Ginny has an amazing voice. And it's like kind of chill pop stuff, you know? There's a couple, there's like one R&B-ish tune on there that's so good. Uh, there's a the, the final ballad song like it's brought me to tears like several times, you know, because you know the, her voice and just like you know these tunes that just it, it's just really good. Ginny Marker, check it out. But it's it's kind of like you know again like getting starting from scratch, starting from one. Like okay, here's the song, you know, you're hearing it for the first time. What is the song trying to say, you know? Uh, and if you have the opportunity to 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 support saying that thing i mean that's a big deal that's what you're asking to do um so it, it's a whole thing so but to answer your question uh seth like yes just practice more just get comfortable you know turn on the click turn on the headphones you know play the f you know memorize the f out of the tunes that you're going to record so that it's just like nothing when you're there it's like oh man i've done this a million times you know so that if someone asks for a change it's easy to do like hey can you you know whatever play quarter notes on the hat instead of eighth notes yeah it's no problem that's what i want to say if someone asks, like hey can you can you you know lower the volume of the ride symbol a little bit on the bridge yeah it's no problem like you want to be that person you know and that's not going to come easy uh unless it is easy for you and the only way anything's going to get easy is if you practice you know um and these are the things that i think not a lot of folks think about um and it's all like it's all fascinating it's pretty pretty crazy that we can all like do this just we just decide to do it and then we're do, <laughs> we're doing it you know i mean granted it takes money and you have to have the circumstances to to be able to play drums and not bother people too much but it's really cool especially now with like streaming and you guys get to like tune in and listen to me freaking blab about it it's nuts i gotta get my setup straight different so i can play music i've got a couple of you know tracks that i want to play too and there's not enough music in my channel. It's all just drumming, you know, and that's a limitation of my setup. Like I've tried, you know, I've made little test videos with this live setup and playing along with tracks, and it's just, it's just not plausible because of the, the delay with the, with doing it in real time, uh, and hearing it back with the delay, and it's just, it's just not, it's just not possible. Which is another reason why I want to upgrade this, the setup because I may actually, if I get another laptop and recording unit, I might just have that for. The drum sound right like drums go into the recording unit through the new map the laptop and then use this setup for like just the streaming you know just go out from one into the other laptop and that other laptop is just streaming you know so i don't have to worry about that i can just listen listen to the source with the with the laptop with the drums and just not worry about that delay because it won't be happening from that um it'll get delayed going to the thing but that's fine so be it um Trying to think if I have anything else to offer on that. Uh, recording process is stiff. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I mean, just listen to listen to music that's that's similar to the music that you're doing. You know, find like the successful version 
of what you're trying to do and analyze the F out of it. Like, why is this working? Like, even if you don't like it, you know, that's the thing. There's tons of music out there that's successful, you know, um, and whether you like it or not, it, it, it is successful. And so it's obviously doing something right. It's obviously reaching people. Uh, and if that's something you want to do, then it's worth looking into. It's possible it may not be something you want to do. Some people make music, they have no interest in whether or not it's listenable. They just need to make the music, which is fine. You know, I think that's true for a lot of people, actually. You know, they don't think about like, well, how listenable is this? Is this something I would put on in the car? <laughs> is this something that I would, I would not want to play in, in the car with other people? You know, like how listenable is something? You know, some people make music just to facilitate their drumming. And a lot of drumming heroes do that. And a lot of the fusion stuff from the 90s is like, the music has just got awful now. You know, um, some of the, the, those Weckl albums... I mean, we used to, I'll tell you the test. This is actually funny. Dave, I love you. Okay, I love your drumming, but I need to, we need to get real for a second about some of the music. The, 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 the litmus paper test for like how listenable a tune is on the, on the Weckl CDs is, could this be played in the background of like an ESPN sports event, you know? Like, because with the horns of, bah, 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 live from St. Louis, it's the Cardinals versus the Philly. Like, like if it fits in the background of like a sporting thing, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not something I'm going to be putting on in the car by, by itself. You know, so we would actually go track to track and be like, wow, this one kind of works too. <laughs> live from Philadelphia, it's the Philadelphia Phillies versus the San Diego Padres. You know, we put the song in the background. That's my Harry Callis impression, for those of you that know who Harry Callis is. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of wax songs that I like, like not just a bit, you know, not being a hater. You know, like Hardwired has some really, really cool tunes. You know, Afrique with a Q. Really like that tune. Um, actually, a lot of the tunes on there I like. The first tune, Hardwired, I think it's called. Uh, super cool. Super cool tune. Um, anyway, yeah, stuff to think about, Seth. We're talking about recording and making music, you know? Less is probably more, honestly. Because you're going to think about, like, when you're recording music, the point is to get to the place where you can just listen to it. That's another thing to think about, which actually has nothing to do with drumming. You think about the final, pr the, f the goal of recording music has nothing to do with drumming. Unless you're recording something where you're like showcasing the drums and it's like, oh, listen to the drumming on this thing. It's like, okay, fine. You play all your stuff. You play your butt off. Okay, it's fine. But if, if you're trying to make music and you're recording music, the goal is to make something to listen to. So that doesn't have anything to do with, with like, you know, technique and drumming. It's got everything to do with how your drums sound, you know, the, your feel and the parts that you come up with and does that gel with the music? Does it make the music listenable? You know, nobody talks about this stuff. Drummers don't talk about this stuff. is because, like, who's going to talk about it? Steve Yan can talk about it. Guys that, like, are in sessions all the time, like JR, these guys, like, from the 80s and 90s that are still doing it, you know? Like, people don't realize. I think it's interesting, actually. I don't know if folks follow JR, like, JR Robinson, a famous studio drummer, right? Like, I follow him on Facebook. He posts all these pictures from, like, like the Oscars, like, the Academy Awards. Like, he'll be in the pit band, like, reading his ass off. Like working drummer stuff, you know, like I, I'm always fascinated by that. I think that's super cool. I have so much respect for that, you know. Um, yeah, he, he's, I, I love JR's, like the power behind his fills. You know, when he plays fills, it's never a nothing fill. It's like this big, powerful thing. It's such a shame that he switched to DW. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love, uh, I love JR's playing. I love Yamaha drums, obviously. Not a big fan of the DW's. Um, I guess that's not a secret. So, Seth, I think we've talked a lot about your question. I hope that helps. Let's see what other people are saying. Um, folks that are interested in the uh, like the drum sound that we got from tuning. If you're just tuning in, we changed the heads on all these drums. So we've got we've got overheads, and I've got this talking mic. I'm going to turn off the talking mic.
So yeah, I gotta get like, the facility's not there because I haven't played the, this many times in so long, but like, there's a disconnect between what's in my head and like what I'm playing. Like, that's ba bloom boom booms but don't blum ba ba Old kill, old Phil Collins, uh, Phil right there. Um, Hello, I must be going. The first track is I don't care anymore. The second track starts with this amazing drum fill. Bones but dos 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 but dos blah 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 blah. Man, that early Phil Collins stuff. Love that stuff. Um, so yeah, I gotta practice, you guys. I gotta get like the, the motions and, and getting from drum to drum. Like I gotta get the rust off that stuff before I really, really like stream with these. Um, let's see. Let's go back. I know I can see the drummer. Yeah, catching up on the on the chat. It was kind of backed up for a minute there, and then we're gonna wrap it up soon. This place is basically a sauna at this point. Lavish D. Uh, oh man, Lavish D with the donation. Uh, Five dollars. Thank you much, uh, Lavish Steve. I have a show, show tonight, but band members speed up live. How can I control the tempos better? Step one: communication, which is tricky because you have to tell someone they're doing something wrong, and that's never easy. Um, and so here's how you do that: if you need to, if you need to bring up, especially with a group of people or one person that they're doing something wrong, here's how you do that: instead of saying like, "Hey, I think you're doing this wrong." take don't take the approach of like being accusatory what you do is you raise an a, an issue overall and see if they agree like hey is the time fluctuating at all like or or just put it on you like even though you know it's not you like you can be like i'm noticing some some maybe some time disconnect like am i slowing down is it possible someone's speeding up or maybe maybe both you know what I mean? Like bring yourself into the blame so people won't be defensive. You know what I mean? You just want to get to the point where like you all agree there's an issue and then you're halfway there. Right. And once you can get them to agree that there's an issue, then like that's the hard part. At that point, it's like time for a solution. Right. OK, we, we, we agree like there's a time problem. So what's the solution? And then you can just be like, because you already know you're doing it right. You already know. And so you don't have to change anything, but they don't know that. Right, so you can be like, okay, look, guys, I'm gonna work on my time. I'm gonna make sure that's like rock solid, okay? So if you feel like maybe you're drifting from me, like I'll I'll try to like get it more solid, but like try to come back to me. You know what I mean? Um, take that approach. Um, you can also bring up and again, like instead of assigning blame, be like, hey, you know, I feel like maybe we we all could do a better job of like listening to the band as a whole instead of being like in our own worlds. And again, like, say that you're going to do it too. Like, I'm going to do it too. Like, I'm going to try to listen to the whole thing. Really make sure that, like, as a band, we're, like, we're outputting one thing, like music, you know? And this is the kind of thing that can be tricky because people will get defensive and you're basically, it, it, the problem will not get solved if the other person's personality is such that they're just not going to allow that process to happen, you know? They'll just be a stop sign at their self-image or they'll get defensive. It's just gonna stop, you know, which really, really sucks. This is the kind of thing I'm fascinated by, like people's behavior and like, you know, getting, like being solution oriented and finding out the right way to approach a person to get the solution to the problem, you know? I've been working in a collaborative, creative environment for a long time now. Uh, and so this is something that I've given a lot of thought to. But when you're dealing with musicians, <laughs> It's, it's different, you know. Uh, let me reread the question. Uh, but the band speeds up. Make sure that you're not speeding up too. I mean, you're assuming that you're not, you know. I, you know what else you can do, Lavish? Record the gigs, man. You can't argue with proof. You can't argue with proof. If you have a point, if you have a spot on the recording where you're like solid and like everyone's with you except for one person, just point it out. Be like, listen, right here. Hear it? See? Like you're, you're off, you know. Uh, and if you need to, like, I mean, to take the reverse position, like, if you need to be, like, aggressive, then, you know, be aggressive. But I wouldn't do that right away. I'd be like, look, we're trying to make music. We're all doing it. You're not doing it. Uh, but offer to help them. Be like, look, let's practice. Like, we'll practice the tune and you, like, work on your part. Like, try to be with us, you know, and, like, play quiet and, like, everyone's together and this one person is is struggling and, like, you know, hey, let's loop this part over and over. Like, let's let's get this part right. Let's let's get it locked in. And when they do get it right, here's another thing. When they do get it right, stop and let them know. Boom! Oh, you're doing it right there. Did you hear it? You did it. Did you hear how different the whole thing sounded? It sounded great. And if you record that, you can bring that to the attention because maybe they'll notice the difference. Like, oh yeah, you're right. I hear on the recording that that it sounds better. 
you know. Um, but it's challenging, man, because, you know, lavish, you get to these venues and it just everything sounds different. This is what I keep saying, you guys. You get to these gigs, you get to these studios. It sounds completely different than what you're used to. And so you need to be able to adjust. You need to be able to get that top down view. You know, it's like being a pilot. Everyone's in the plane and you're driving. It's like you pull up. We're all taking off now. You know, you, the goal is to like get to cruising altitude, get that smooth flying. It's like, okay, we're playing the song. Okay, we're doing it. Up, oh, someone's becoming a little like a little turbulence. Chances are, because the guitar player's got his shit so loud, he can't even hear the rest of the band. You know, that's the thing. Like, and I see now this is turning into a whole thing. It's like whether or not you can hear yourself. If it's a big venue, it's like, well, how good is your monitor mix? Well, how good is the sound man? Well, now we're at the mercy of the sound man. Why do you think Weck started bringing his his own mixing board to every gig and had to jump through all those hoops? Like, bring your own drum kit isn't enough. You know. Um, that's why is because you work super hard you, you actually make some progress as a band or as a musician like you get good you know and you get to the gig and it's like well what I'm trying to say is not reaching the audience because sound guy you know you watch any rock video like 70 80 percent of rock videos that are not like pro pro mixed you watch the drummer when he plays a film the tom sound like crap because all they care about is kicking the snare you know I've actually paid cash. I've actually tipped, tipped sound guys off on rock gigs. I'd be like, dude, I use my toms. Like, please put them in. I've straight up given guys like 10s and 20s. Like at the whiskey on Sunset. I'm like, I use my whole kit, not just my kick and my snare. You know? Um, and so make sure the mix is good on stage, which sucks because a lot of times, unless it's a AAA or AA or a headliner thing, you're not going to get a lot of time to, to sound check. And if you do get a good sound to sound check, it's probably not going to be the sound during the show. There's a lot of things going against it, you know? And all of that is resistance against your goal. All of it. It's all resistance against making music, you know? I mean, in the age of Facebook and Twitter and, and social media, it's like there's a lot of videos now of guys like, hey, check it out. I'm behind stage. I saw one recently. Was it the Chili Peppers or someone... It's like an iPhone video like from back from like literally the side of the stage at like a big arena thing. And it's like, man, it does not sound like it's hard to play. Like it doesn't sound that good all the time. I mean, granted, it's a phone recording, but the, the, the point remains. You're going to have to play under circumstances that are difficult, which makes it all the more important that like the drumming stuff. I, I got that candle. I don't need to worry about the drumming, you know. So those are my thoughts on trying to get unity in your band under different scenarios thanks for the donation lavish long time uh lavish comes to all the streams good luck at your gig tonight lavish you're gonna you're gonna be awesome you're gonna be awesome let's see doesn't the music to take us depends on the band guys so good talk to them about it yes exactly well singer well you might have to deal with it don't know it's a public wants and it should but you okay you guys are chatting with each other Tempos are locked in regardless of how the feel of the song is directly my playing or the difficulty of execution. Hope you all go. It's not easy for me, but it was Seth Stevenson. Thanks again, Steve, for your time. No problem, Seth. You're going to do great in the studio. Just keep practicing. Can't believe you talk this long, says normalized audio. Man, I'm telling you guys, like, if you get talking about anything I'm interested in, it's just go, go, go. And it's really hot in here. I should really stop. <laughs> this is my weekend. Like, I'm, I'm really taking a break. I've been working a lot, and, like, I needed to, like, unplug my brain and just talk about drums. So this is why we're doing it. Steve, I, I might do another stream tomorrow maybe. Like, I'm going to finish setting up, you know, get the mics on, you know, and then we'll do a proper stream, like, where everything's mic'd up. I'm actually very excited to get these drums mic'd up and get them sounding good for you guys. Um, Steve, I find you the most interesting drummer, and you always go so much deeper in understanding of the music. Such an inspiration, says Steven Turner. Thank you, Steven. Talking shop with the great drummers. It's fun. Uh, a tour of your streaming setup once it's upgraded. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, probably, hey, that'd be interesting. Vincent, yes, I love it. Okay, ever play with Greg Spiro? He's a good guy in LA. I have not. Greg Spiro might be looking for a drummer now. God, I'm not familiar with Greg Spiro, but send him my way. You know, <clears throat> send him to my YouTube channel, see if he's into it. Uh, hello, hello, drummers, you guys. Harry Callis. Yes, Harry Callis was the play by play announcer for the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, sight reading is sight reading a waste of time nowadays says Miguel um, I mean it depends it's only going to help learning about reading it's only going to help it's not going to hurt it's not going to make you worse it's only going to help so that right there should be enough reason to at least like get into it 
understanding like rhythms, being able to read and write rhythms is going to help you on the drum kit tremendously. Okay, but that's not sight reading. Sight reading a chart like on the gig, all that's going to do is give you more opportunity to make music with people, and so that's also good. Um, <clears throat> getting a bass chart, getting a piano chart, and being able to like, oh, okay, play off that. That's like an art form, man. Uh, there's books and stuff on how to do that, and there's teachers out there that are good at teaching that stuff. And yes, I would recommend doing that because all that's going to do is give you an advantage over the, over, uh, over other drummers, and it's going to help your. It's going to. It's a good brain exercise actually, um, and it's just going to help your sense of rhythm, your your sense of time. It's going to help your understanding of playing music. Um, yes, it's not a waste of time. Absolutely not. You know, it may not be required. I mean, if you're if you're like a young kid who's going to be doing like sessions for YouTube artists. You know, chances are there's not going to be a lot of reading going on, but that's not the question. The question is, is it a waste of time? The answer is no, it's not a waste of time. It will help. You may not get a lot of use out of it in the real world, but it will help you as a musician. Uh, yeah, man, crazy LA stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see, not for me. Got to sight read anything. Let's see. I met with a theater drummer and went and bought a cymbal from me and said it's possible to make. They were doing that stuff. Yeah, theater gigs, man, it's a thing. There's a lot of guys out there, and, and, and again, um, there's a lot of videos on this too, guys like in the pit playing theater gigs and stuff and, and there's a lot of reading and really cool music, very challenging, I have a lot of respect for those guys. Um, I've done very, very little of that. Um, let's see, Holmes, could you probably sight read anything you give him? No, that's not true, I'm not, I'm not a very good sight reader. Uh, my sight reading absolutely stinks, as I practice it, there you go. Let's see, those are Tom's double stroke. Uh, lots of chatting. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch up to the comments, you guys. Sorry, I talked, I talked so much. Uh, let's see. Oh man, you guys, lots of comments. Uh, let's see. Yamaha Roll says Matthias, that's true. Play simple, respect it so much. Let's see, Holmes, you can probably start reading anything. That's not true. Okay. There you go. There's double stroke. Are those toms double stroke rollable? <laughs> says Bobby Vincent. Sure. Sure. If you can do that, I mean, we'll, let's wait till we get the mics on and we'll mess. We'll talk about Tom ideas once I'm like warmed up on them and stuff. Matthias, yes, hi, yes, see Simon is saying hi to Matthias, I'm telling you guys, check out Matthias, check out his channel, he's a, he's a, an amazing drummer, YouTube, steal your practice time, yes, so tricky, this advice is so good, being diplomatic, oh, okay, you guys are commenting on my advice about talking to the rushing musician, I think Steve has been there on this one, yes, oh my god, this is an example of how a leader would approach an issue, Boss will go further. You got to be tactful. Yeah, it's it's a thing, man. Talking to people, talking to people, and it sucks because like, I have like, uh, I've got a pretty like I have a sense of humor, you know, and I have the ability to be like witty and sarcastic, and that don't, doesn't always ha like you always have to suppress that stuff, you know. Um. Uh, let's see. We have some. Oh, we have some spam in the chat. Interesting. I've made it to the big time, you guys. <laughs> We've got like some spam in the chat. Yes, I've made it. You know you've made streaming when like, there's a bot spamming crap about naked girls. Uh, yeah, sorry about the spam. I'll see if I can take steps on my channel to, to reduce it. Oh man, Greg Coleman. Let's see, I would like to hear you with Greg Coleman. He's a good, you know what, I came really close. I think I told the story in Normalized Audio. I came really close to playing with Greg Coleman in his uh, trio that he does with Shane Galas and, oh man, who plays bass? There's different bass players in there. Um, I forget who the bass player was. Uh, but Glenn Sobel was the sub, the normal sub, and Glenn couldn't make it, and so they actually called me, someone called me, Cosmo Squad and I learned the tunes and man there was some really heavy double bass stuff I remember I took away my toms and I just set up like a bass drum a snare drum hi-hat and ride and like for for a long time I was working on my double bass stuff and as we got closer to the gig uh, it got canceled like they got someone else or the gig got canceled or something so I did not have the opportunity to play with him but man that would have been fun actually buying a set of walkie-talkies for communicating with gigs and sound guys that's funny Oh my god, sorry about all the spam, wow. Pre-programmed set list. Yeah, see, digital, like, iPads and stuff, like, on the gig, like, uh, I'm the old guy, I don't have a lot of experience with that. Let's see, Steeple Hammer 1. Hey, Steve, has Dennis Chambers influenced your playing much over the years? I recall you speaking highly of him on House of Drumming. Is a big fan of his playing and yours. Thank you. 
Um, I love Dennis Chambers. Hey, look, Julian, Her Julian Fernandez. Um, Matthias is heading out. See you later, Matthias. Thanks for coming. Um, Dennis is one of my all-time favorite drummers. He, uh, he had a huge influence on me, particularly, particularly, and I think he would like this. I'll take a chance and say that he would like this. Um, it wasn't his chops that I, I saw and was like, man, I want to do that. Because I didn't. Like, I, I knew right away I couldn't do like, I mean, like the lightning fast Dennis. I was like, I'm not that guy. I kind of, you know, and it was the groove stuff. Like Dennis's pocket, Dennis's time, Dennis's groove, that was the stuff where I was like, oh, more than Weck, more than Vinny for the most part. Um, yeah, it was Dennis's groove stuff where I was like, oh, this is how, this is how I want to be. His groove stuff is so, uh, it's just so, like I want to say, I want to say fat, but that's not like, I mean, it is fat, it's like it's centered, it's on the grid, it's like it's it's hip, it's like cool ideas. Like the, there's a bunch of recordings, obviously, that he's on, but there was one that's actually pretty busy. It's not necessarily a simple, um, simple playing. Uh, some of the tunes are, but anyway, there's a bass player named Gary Willis, and he has a recording, a CD called Bent. He's got a couple CDs, but Bent was the one for me, and Dennis is on it, and there's a bunch of tunes on there that are just slow ass, balls dragon, greasy, dirty slow pocket grooves and Dennis Dennis just does it man he's just like he's got that kind of you can just hear the attitude uh, his his lack of interrupting the groove which I, as I get older like I just really hate when people do that like just stop stop playing crap <laughs> stop playing little things between bar four and five you know like just play through man Dennis plays through for the most part again it's like a fusion record it's a bass player's record um, and it's all instrumental it's like Dennis and Gary Willis on bass, who's amazing. Scott Kinsey on keys. Uh, Bob Berg on sax, rest in peace. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, and there's there's a bunch of tunes. So the first tune is this slow thing in three. It's like... And like you can just... Like his... Every little thing, like the ghost notes, not just the ghost notes, but like the, the stomping and chicking of the hat, like doing the thing, like I first saw Vinny do it on the Sting Unplugged, where it's like you chick your hat in between hitting it, but like it's always a chick. It's never like a, it's never this. It's just, and then, you know, like this kind of thing. about Dennis Chambers, Gary Willis, Bent is the name of the recording. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Four minutes, I was muted. Oh, man. Yeah. Streaming problems. I'm still working on it. I'm still a noob. Um, thank you for the text. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I got to keep track with the, with the chat like while I'm talking because you guys are like, hey, hey, you're muted. It's funny. Yeah, I'm just going to type down too. Sorry. Yeah, I would hate that. If I was watching a stream and someone's like, they're, obli they're oblivious to the fact that they're, yeah. All right. Yeah, blowing it. I'm a streaming noob. What can I say? I should spend more time drumming less time talking. Someone asked about Dennis Chambers. We're talking about Gary Willis Bent. And the first tune, which is a slow thing in three, which ends up being a, half, a double time thing in six. And then there's another tune called Armageddon Blues. It's like this fast thing in three or six. Um, that was like the recording that really, that really um, inspired me uh, for Dennis. Uh, also, um, Brecker Brothers live in Barcelona. I was talking about an old video recording from the late '80s, early '90s. Brecker Brothers live in Barcelona um, with Dennis, and I know that Weck did that gig as well. And they didn't release anything official, but there is some footage of Weck on that gig. And that was a good a good example of like, man, I really prefer Dennis on this gig. You know, and you know I'm a huge Michael fan, right? I mean, it's okay to not like everything. 
that's another thing that drummers tend to do. Everything has got to be positive. Like it's okay to not like something as long as you're, as long as you're respectful and constructive about it. I think it's okay to be like, well, I prefer this other thing, right? I prefer Dennis on the Brecker gig, you know. Um, I would prefer Weck on the Chickory Electric Band gig. Like it's fine. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Brecker Brothers live in Barcelona. The whole concert's on YouTube. Like put down your phone, put on the headphones, watch that whole concert. Like Dennis is amazing on there. Um, Mike Stern on guitar. I was saying James Genus on bass. That was my introduction to James Genus, who's still doing it. There's tons of footage of James Genus with uh, Vinny and Herbie and James Genus on bass. He's the he's the frigging he's the frigging bass player on Saturday Night Live. Like these guys that like get there and stay there. This is what I was saying while I was muted. Um, yeah, and James Genus just makes the best faces when he plays. You know, he's these guys that like personify the thing that they're playing you know like he hits these really evil low notes like this Anthony Jackson stuff and it's just like man crazy so uh, all right I think we've been streaming for for enough sorry about the sorry about the muting um, and I appreciate the text uh, letting me know man four minutes is a long time to look like an idiot but I never professed that I was anything other than that so we uh, we tuned out the recording customs, you guys. We did it. So next step for me is to put the mics on, get a good drum sound, set up the cymbals, and then I'll do another stream. Maybe even tomorrow, right? Because I'm trying to do a lot of drumming this weekend. Um, anyone that's interested in drum lessons, steveholmes at gmail.com. Um, also on PayPal, steveholmes at gmail.com, if anyone wants to support that way. Um, oh, Curtis. Oh, yes, Curtis45. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Kurt, is that you? Oh, man, this is your eight. Kurt, you're here. I was going to send you a picture on Facebook of the of the Toms. Kurt, we put on new heads. If you watch the stream from the beginning, you'll see. We put on new heads. We tuned them up. All right, I'm going to turn off the talkie mic. I, I won't forget to turn it back on. We've got the overheads. All right. And we'll hit the, we'll hit the drums. All right, here's what it sounds like with, with the talkie mic. Let's turn off the talking mic. There you go. I'm so rusty like with the three with the three toms. Like the, the motions and stuff. Like I gotta work on getting the rust out of that. Like just get used to like the, the motions, you know, and the coordination of going like from drum to drum. Like that's so fun to practice. It's part of the reason why I set this up. Um yeah. So I don't know if Kurt is forty five if you're like the Kurt <laughs> that I was referencing. Um yeah, talking mic sounds good. Maybe I should have left that on. Um Look at the lump in the back of your head. Yeah, will do. Maybe you just saved my life. Um, let's see, your best drummer ever. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> um, all right, so that's it. This is like no mics. You know, we, if you want to see the tuning process, like you got to watch the stream from the beginning. We've been here for two hours and 15 minutes. Um, we started with old heads. We took them off. We, t we put the new heads on. We tuned them up. Uh, and it was actually the eight that gave us the biggest problem, which still sounds good, but... Uh, yeah, I think there's a little room for improvement. So, but I'm looking forward to getting the actual mics on here, uh, and uh, and getting a good drum sound and stuff. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna cut it. Okay. Appreciate you guys hanging out. This was this was super fun. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. My name is Steve Holmes. We're streaming live from Los Angeles. Sorry about the uh, having the mic muted for a while. Um, 
yeah, and sorry about the spam. There's like there's like spam in here now. I guess like I said, you know, we we've made the big time when there's like bots and friggin' uh, you know inappropriate spam in here. All right, have a great weekend. Talk to you guys soon, hopefully. All right, good luck.